Howdy, everyone. So today I figured I would review something from long ago, a blast from the past. So I think of this like a vintage kind of a thing, of course, obviously. So I just figured I would review one of the, I guess you can say, in other words, obscure titles of Kung Fu, which I haven't done in a good minute here. And yes, of course, it's quite old, like I was saying. It's fairly low budget, vintage. Oh, yeah. So I just thought I'd do this because this is a, these are the type of martial arts films I prefer anyway, if I'm going to be honest here. And yes, obviously, there's going to be one of those times where I would be talking about the unedited version. So yeah, I watched it with subtitles. So there you go. So the film we'll be talking about is the one named China Armed Escort. So there you go, I guess. And yes, obviously, I don't mind that. So that's kind of the thing, though, because... I know a lot of people may not want to watch something that old, but I'm going to do it anyway, I suppose, because it's my channel, I'll do whatever they want with it. Anyway, of course, as always, let's just get into the plot, shall we? So here we go. Of course, as usual, the villain of the story is this emperor guy. Of course, someone who's in power, obviously, as the attempts do, of course. But there are these individuals... That's the thing, though. When it comes to these types of movies, it's it's often someone in power, and of course, as all as usual, they have their own clan. They're very strong. You have to go through the individual's henchmen to clear to pretty much clear the way to fight the bad guy. And of course, the head mantra is gonna be the toughest when you think about it. But anyway, that's the thing because there's always someone who wants to challenge them. Our main character wants to take them down. Obviously, so there's this ju famous justice export escort service whom he sees as a threat. The villain, I mean, the villain sees this individual as a threat to him. So there was something that was to be done because pretty much what this is centered around is that the story involves around this escort service that's run by this father and daughter, strictly disciplined in martial arts, as you can guess yourself, along with Chargementship. They are charged with transporting a priest out of China to the capital of Mongolia as an attempt to expose this wicked government's secrets. Thus, this corrupted king who is stab at nothing to capture and kill this said priest who threatens his rule with the secrets he has. And that's the thing, though, because you have to make it risk. You have to make some kind of drama here. Make sure the fight scenes actually amount to something. The version I've seen, like I said a moment ago, is this subtitled version. But the thing is that, also, it's it has like this VHS top type quality look to it. And yeah, I know that kind of be a bothersome for some people out there. Personally speaking, that doesn't bother me really. I don't mind have, having this had that kind of look. I mean, it was on a DVD or some streaming service. And I can definitely say that this is something I for the Kung Fu junkies. Some people, the people out there who, who really like this kind of a thing, if this is your cup of tea. If you like to watch those really old Kung Fu movies, then I would definitely say check this out. If you're a newbie, if you're not, if you're someone that's not really used to this kind of a thing, then I don't know. Maybe you could watch it, I suppose, if you want to give it a shot. And I can say that the the fighting sequences, the fight scenes in this film are really nicely done. I obviously, have to bring that up because I, usually, for the most part, when it comes to the old fight scenes in these kung fu movies, they're really usually well done. They're well choreographed, of course. Obviously, there's not a whole lot of money being placed into these features, really, unfortunately. But these tend to be the better martial arts films. It's something I mentioned before, is that I know a lot of these studios want to make sure the investment is paid off, which in some respects is understandable. But that's the thing, though. When you're making a high-budget movie, you have to make sure you're competing against other big budget films. I mean, yes, obviously not every huge budget film is going to make money. There's going to be some flops here and there. But literally every single big budget film is racing to number one. There's competition. It happens. But when it comes to the really low budget features, it's like, dude, they don't have that much to worry about. It's not as stressful because 
you could be more creative, really. I mean, yes, obviously, you want more people to see this as soon as you can. But you're not going to be as restricted as what I'm trying to get out of here. You're going to take more risks. When it comes to big budget movies, it's that the films must be watered down, must just pay attention to the crowds of people who's going to be watching them and just pretty much kiss their ass, pretty much. I mean, unless there's going to be a director out there that wants to take risks anyway, but it's on, a, it's on occasion. It's not that often, unfortunately, when it comes to these big budget films. Ultimately, what I'm trying to get is that, yes, the the more budget you have, the more ri the more you have to pay pretty much pay attention to a specific group. This specific group can just complain about certain things, and you have to cater towards them so because you can so they can see your movie. Well, compared to a low budget feature, you really don't have to really. You you don't have to hear all these angry parents that send you letters or what have you. Just complain about certain scenes being too dark or what have you. But I'm also trying to get that, and yes, before anyone says anything, I know the title of the of this movie. It sounds like a, it sounds like something pornographic, which yes, I do realize that. Some people could would complain about that alone. I mean, I thought I'm judging everybody if anyone that works in that kind of field. If you know what I mean, I'm not here to judge about that because that's not the point of the video. No, you do you. I suppose you make make some money somehow, as long as nobody's being forced into it, obviously. But I know that's something I mentioned before, but I don't want to get stay too much on that. But that's besides the point, because a lot of these people just complain about certain things, which they have. And that's one of the reasons I like to go into these type movies that hardly anyone would notice, just to shine some light in those, in those kinds of movies. Because, as I said earlier, these are the type of kung fu movies I tend to watch anyway and enjoy more. And I haven't reviewed any of these types of movies in a good while, so here we are, I suppose. And this is definitely the type of movie I would definitely recommend. Like I said, it's the unedited version I'm talking about. And that's the way it should be. I don't like it when movies are edited down to altered, to fixed up a certain way or whatever. I just don't like that because I know it's, you can always argue it's of a portrait thing in some ways, which, yes, and to some extent it kind of is when you think about it. In some ways, it's a portrait thing. And... Of course, a lot of people are in the United States may not understand because it's, this is from a different country. They may not be familiar with their customs or what. But there would be a censorship in various ways because of violence or something. Or maybe something might be too suggestive. And yes, by the way, prostitution was like showed in some of these kung fu movies. I'm not saying that's when this one specifically is going for that. But it's been here and there is what I'm saying. For whatever reason. So yeah, that's been a part of plot line. Depending on which movie, just going out there. It's been a part of the plot lines here and there. But anyway, it's kind of sidetracking here is that I do like this one. The fight scenes are really well choreographed. Like as I was saying a moment ago, I like the fight scenes. It's not so choppy. It's like some of the kung fu scenes I've seen in a more modern day era, I suppose. Which just does get pretty damn annoying when you think about it. They have to edit like every single move, do like a 30, 50 different camera angles in like five seconds. Like, come on. Give me a break here. But nevertheless, I did like this one as a whole. I did like the acting. I did like the way the story is provided here. It's pretty nice it's done. I just kind of wish it could, it could get a better version of this. A more cleaned up copy, I guess. Because some bits are a little too bright in some areas. And you wish just can't get in the way of enjoying it, obviously. Even though I don't mind the VHS tape look, but I'm just saying. Anyway, let's just wrap it up, I suppose. This one was pretty nice. I like the story that was done here. And of course, there were these characters that want to do the right thing. They want to make sure they defeat the villain. Of course, the villain is in power. Of course, the villain character has some kind of influence, as these tend to have with that kind of a thing. Which, of course, you got to put some kind of drama in some kind of way, I suppose. And that's totally fine, obviously. You have to make it seem intense interesting in some kind of way so there's that obviously in other words you have to make sure there's a what what's ultimate the goal here what's the villains trying to do and what the, what the heroes or heroines are trying to do here exactly you do have to think about that kind of a thing of course so anyway i'll give this version a nova Val rating of a 7.3 out of 10 it's 7.3 out of 10 so as always thanks for watching and take care the next time see ya Oh yeah.
Later.